Templar for Hilo and Golgotha. Unfortunately, Teku could not make it. Um, some late nights, but that's life. And uh, that's okay, because we do 3 plus GM, and uh, we're going to carry on with this chapter of uh, the first story of Mice and Men, the first story in our Second City Chronicle. If you uh, are new to us, thanks for stopping in and checking us out. Um, there's plenty of other past episodes that you can watch. Uh, we've also got some GM tips from time to time that you can uh, that you can take a look at. Um, yeah, if you think we're worth a, a like, hit that like button. If you think you're worth a subscribe, then please subscribe. Uh, we'd be happy to have you make some comments down below. Join us on our Discord. See us on social media. Interact whichever way you will. But um, yeah, so we're going to carry on here. We're going to take a look at what uh, Grayson Bridger um, is doing on this uh, close of the Monday, uh, December, what, like 12th or 13th now? 2005 in Chicago. Well, what, th what time is it right now? Um, you guys had, I think, lunch, right? You went for lunch? Right. Something like that. Or late, uh, kind of a mid-afternoon thing. So yeah, it's probably like late afternoon. So what day is it? Sorry, is it a Monday? It's Monday, yeah. Oh, um, I might have a lecture they have to do. <laughs> uh, given the time, you're probably... Um, Oh. There's, there's a lot of marking exams and stuff, yeah. right? It's, marking it's that's December, true. That's true. so that yeah. is true. That is true. They, you know, yeah. they've probably gotten that point yet. So, um, all right. Well, um, I'm going to head back to the office for a bit. Okay, sounds good. So we all agree to meet up with uh, with uh, Christopher at another point. Yeah, yeah. You uh, you guys arrange a time to meet again and and the like. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So uh, you make your way back to the office there, um, and there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Cool. And uh, yeah, you uh, you open up your uh, office and you walk in. And what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to go to the computer and do some correcting, um, but. While I'm correcting, I'm, I'm still thinking about the the apparitions, whatever they were. I mean, I don't have another way to describe them. So I know that I, I talked to Christopher about uh, looking up through the archives so we could see any images of them, like in the like you know old old uh, photos from uh, from that era, from like between nineteen you know nineteen fifty and what nineteen sixty five probably. Yeah. Um, so. After I get my next set of uh, my my correcting done, I'm, I think I'm, I might actually make a trip to the archives. Okay, okay, cool. As you're just uh, kind of wrapping up um, that stack of marking and uh, getting ready to leave, I need you to give me a resolve plus composure check with one with a plus one. Resolve plus composure. All right. Resolve plus composure plus one. Oh, fancy. All right. Well, um, yeah, the thought pops into your head that you might want to give a call to, uh, to Samantha Way. But uh, you put it out of your mind. Yeah, I could do that later. Yeah, and you, uh, you uh, head down to the archives. Now, it's pretty late on a Monday, but you can still get into the archives there. Um, mm -hmm. Again, uh, the Regenstein Library is the largest of the libraries. And, uh, okay. Yeah. There you are. So I'll go to the um, uh, front desk and uh, see if there's anything we can help me find, you know, uh, possibly old yearbooks, because, I mean, they, they, it was certainly back in the day, that wasn't an uncommon thing at universities. They, they had kind of yearbooks. Oh, yeah, you would be able to find yearbooks, yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So um, you're going to basically do some research then. Yeah, I'm going to look uh, between, now, I figure it's probably between 1950 and 1965, uh, but to be careful, to be safe, I'm going to go 19, 
1945 to 1970. Yeah, sure. So it's going to be, um, you're doing what you do best here, right? You, oh, yes. You are an academician. And, I am indeed. Uh, and so it's it's really intelligence plus academics, um, which you have professional training in, which means you're getting nine again. Um, you can check your composure, though. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, and it's in history, so you're going to get, you know, you're going to get another die for specialization, so. Oh, yes. All right. And basically well, you're going to need to, um, digging around, I'd say you're probably going to need to accumulate. Uh, you're looking for a specific people in a in over several decades. I'm going to say you're probably going to need to accumulate about eight successes total. Every roll is okay. a half an hour. All right. Uh, and roll. All right. All right. There's one roll, and you dig around. Um, you know, working through different stacks of 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 books and the like. Okay, roll again. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, before you roll again, um, okay. you are afraid of these things. Your shaken condition here right. is caused by that encounter with the cheerleader under the bleachers. You could, okay. you can, if you, if your fear prevents <coughs> you from going forward, you can choose to fail this next roll. And you get a beat by resolving that that shaken. And then don't forget, um, don't forget. Whenever you fail, you can also opt then to make it a dramatic failure to get another beat. But it's now a dramatic failure. Not saying that you right. should or right. have to do this. I'm just making sure you're aware that all of yeah. you are aware of the mechanics about this game. So, so here's here's what I kind of envision. Okay, yeah. so um, I've been really like I, I'm pouring through pretty quickly and. You know, I was fine at the beginning, but now I realize I'm, I'm I'm narrowing down on it. Probably, I've got you know, it's between a certain number of dates now. It's it's going to be much easier to find, and now I'm growing really uncomfortable. Okay. So, the next one I will fail, and I'm going to say, uh, and and not because I necessarily have to fail, but because my I'm I'm just too nervous to actually look at it alone because I'm here alone, basically. That's right. You are. Yeah. You are pretty yeah. well on your own in the, in that yeah. corner of the library. Now you're not the only person in the library, but yeah. Yeah. So you're going to resolve shaken then. Yeah. Okay. So you get a beat. I'll give you a beat. And, um, when you fail on an extended action like this, um, you get a choice. You can either take a condition or you can abandon the pursuit. Now, if I abandon the pursuit, is it permanent? Do I can I come back to it? Uh, uh at some other time, but not during. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. like right now, yeah. right? Yeah, like you, it would be at a at a later time. Um, so you, it's a condition of your choice. Sorry, uh, sorry, it's a condition of my choice. You can offer a different condition if you think it makes sense, or um, but if you refuse the condition or can't agree, or we can't come to an agreement on the condition, you lose all of your accumulated successes. So. Huh. That's to be one or the other? Um, yeah, so either you abandon or you take a condition yeah. of my choosing, but if you disagree with, if you refuse to take the condition that I choose, uh, you can offer a different condition. Uh, right. And again, um, you know, there's a number of them, but um, you can you can describe something that might be more realistic. Um, okay. or something that you think is, is better. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of, uh, and if, if that, if that, if we fail to assign you a condition, essentially you lose your accumulated successes. Right. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I will do. Well, let me offer is... you, you can, let me offer, or sorry, you can choose, you can either choose to abandon or take the condition, your choice first. Um, I'm going to I'm going to abandon. Okay, so you just call off the search. Yeah. So basically, because I see I see I've actually rolled the eight that I need, but basically I'm in the last book. I know it's in there, and that's freaked me out. Oh, that's awesome! So you've basically you've basically reduced it down to one book. 
Yeah, I know where it is. You know that, but you've now, got it in your hands, but yeah, you're too yeah. scared to open. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. What's your uh, What's your vice? Uh, my vice is cynicism. Okay, what's your What's your virtue? Purposefulness. Okay. All right, so there you are, holding that yearbook. So I just kind of close, I, I, I start to open it and then I close it. I, I just can't do it. I'm just, you know, too nervous. I start to breathe kind of heavy and I get, you know, put it down. I go, fuck, stamp out of it. Jesus Christ. Okay, cool. So an hour and a half wasted. So I just look at the cover. Um, yeah, I'll maybe come back to this. So I get up and I'm kind of maybe a little bit shaken by the experience, even though, you know, I'm also kicking myself. I think like this is, like, this is ridiculous, right? This, it, there's no such thing as ghosts. There's no, I don't know what that was. It was some sort of hallucination. I, I should get over this, but I'm not obviously. Um, so instead I put on my jacket and get ready to go. What time is it? Do you think? So it would be uh, probably maybe five at this point. Five, six. Oh, yeah. Five thirty, something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I'm going to, I'm going to head back to my apartment. Okay. As you're walking out, there's a, uh, there's a student over in one of the, the carols there, um, just kind of studying or something like that. And, uh, again, you're going to have to give me a resolve plus composure check. Plus one. Oh, okay. Resolve plus composure. And normal... Take off academics plus one. Three again. Oh, another three. All right. Um, you feel again a thought pops into your head that you should say hello, but you kind of put it out of your mm -hmm. your mind. Mm -hmm. You. Uh, you hear behind you. Oh, hi, Doctor Bridger. I turn around. Is it the uh, person who was uh, studying? Yeah, she is, she waves at you. you oh. Now that you see her sort of oh. looking up, she's one of your students. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll smile and say, "Hello. Uh, have have a good night." Cool. And I need what's your composure? My composure is. I think it's my composure is three. And your resolve is two. Two. Okay. Wow. What a brutal roll. Okay. So, <laughs> never mind. Off you go. <laughs> where, where, are you head, where are you headed to? Uh, back to the apartment. All right. So you're back at your apartment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make some dinner. And after, you know, I have dinner. Um, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm still. I still have something in my mind. I. I. I'm. I, I'm not gonna go back to researching, uh, the the two figures, but I'm still very curious about. Um, I'm still very curious about uh, the uh, uh, Stag Field. Okay. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to again. I. I, I don't have access. Well, I mean, if I'm a professor, I might have access to, uh, you know, the 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 online oh yeah you um, certainly would yeah, yeah, yeah so for sure yeah so i'm gonna do i mean i might as well i'm gonna do a little bit of research on stag field um a little bit of the history and if there's any kind of you know strange events that occurred there okay so you're just looking for peculiar historical realities that happen at stag yeah field. something you know things that stand out things that are unusual that happen there um you know Particularly between the year period of 1945 and 1970. Well, actually, no, uh, I don't have to do that uh, because I still remember. I do remember uh, the date of the yearbook I was looking at that I'm pretty sure I'd find the photos in. So I'm just going to look at uh, between you know the, the the few years surrounding that. Okay. Okay. Cool. So uh, 
Yeah, that's a little bit more narrow, so I'd say it's only five successes that you're going to need. Same sort okay. of role as before. Um, yeah. Okay. And, so uh, intelligence plus academics and plus one. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, and not only that, you got an exceptional success, mm -hmm. which means that, um, yeah, you you are the king of research. So, with an exceptional success, um, yeah. So you can either find what you're looking for, as well as leads toward much bigger source of inf or score of information. Um, you can reduce the time. Um, that it takes to do this instead um, by a quarter uh, or you could reduce the number of successes required but you blew it out of the water so yeah so, so either reduce I the think, time it takes or because it took you half an hour <laughs> but, yeah I'm okay with having this done in half an hour I'm going to go with the first option where yeah, I sure. find out what I want and anything else that's useful yeah so um, so what you find out is that um is that um, the, the biggest the biggest historical thing related to Stag Field is that um, is that uh, Enrico Fermi um, built the first nuclear reactor in the uh, in the badminton um, area un underneath it right like um, mm -hmm. it's, there's a place marked off there and but that was that was not in that decade but every any time you look it up. It's like, oh yeah, this is, you know, this is where they did the first nuclear reactor, right? Like, it's just, it doesn't matter what you look up about this field, that's uh, that's what you uh, what you get, and um, of course, but um, yeah, the uh, yeah, what you what you find out, of course, is that the f the first stag field is the one that you're thinking about here, not the. Uh, mm -hmm. Not the, um, you know, one that was uh, the new one that was made, which was made, you know, uh, in a different section of the um, the campus. Um, but the old one, the first one, was uh, was actually decommissioned sometime in the nineteen fifties. It was demolished in nineteen fifty seven, um, as much of the stadium site was used to construct the Regenstein Library. Um, so what you find is that, um, is that, uh, yeah, the, well, the, where you, where you narrowed down the yearbooks, you actually, you narrowed them down to the 1960s, early 1960s, well after the field would have been, uh, decommissioned, torn down. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and um, and you also, you know, learn that uh, that um, well, some some other strange. Uh, you you kind of in your searching, you know how you get like uh, guess it's like the entropy of of the internet, right? Like you, you mm -hmm. just get sucked in. You'll start looking up like a recipe for banana bread, and you end up, you know. I know exactly. So. Just as an aside, years ago, I found myself on Wikipedia, and I was looking up Genghis Khan. And of course, I thought, of course, how did I, that's what you look how, up. Just how, what, here's the kicker, though. How, what, I, I, I've forgotten why I was on there. I forgot. So I just kept clicking back and back and back until I finally got to Noah Wiley. And I realized, oh, right, Noah Wiley, he, that was his last season on uh, ER, and uh, I wanted to see how long he'd been on. And I just started clicking links. So Noah Wiley does lead to Genghis Khan. Noah Wiley. Okay. Yeah. Now you know. Well, you know that's that's important information because it's really not. How else would we ever come to that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah. So the I went down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So those rabbit holes. Um, this is kind of one of those rabbit hole situations mm -hmm. where um, you know you start. Um, you start going down there and, you, and you're, you know, you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, like, 
you know, because then you start reading back about Stagfield and you go further back to Enrico Fermi and you keep going further back. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was there that Fermi developed the atomic bomb, essentially, or the precursors to the atomic bomb. But then you found they find that other less famous scholars also made dangerous discoveries, um, you know, at, at the University of Chicago, and not all of them necessarily were scientific. Um, brilliance and obsession, um, right, uh, are often, you know, uh, bed partners, but uh, wisdom is often in short supply there, and bad things tend to happen when those two things come together. So you find this peculiar story about, um, in 1924, two University of Chicago students named Nathan Leopold and uh, Richard Loeb became obsessed oh, with what it might feel like to take a human life. And it's difficult to say uh, what led them to their fascination, but they gave into it. And... Uh, and they killed a 14-year-old boy named Bobby Franks. And uh, that happened on the campus um, near uh, near Stagfield. Hmm. This is inside. I actually know this story, so very oh. cool. Uh, <laughs> you pulled them low? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the one I'm thinking of. Cool. Anyways, um, okay, well, okay, I'm doing the research on that. That seems strange. Yeah, and then, of course, that links into another uh, another kind of related sort of thing that, um, that uh, what was found, because you're looking at, you know, weird things that then happened to university students and, um, and near Chicago, surrounding Chicago, are the forest preserves which are forested uh, woodlands and stuff like that that were set aside to to not really, uh, you know, do away with the entirety of nature as they develop the city. And um, for the most part, they're, um, they're, they're full of jogging paths and picnic tables and stuff like that. Like, it's definitely not the wilds of the untamed wilderness, but, you know, um, but... Uh, yeah, what what you what you find like as you as you again spiral down into the interweb is that um, is that uh, hikers and joggers have been finding dead animals, dogs and cats, with a with a rather disturbing frequency, and many of the animals are impaled or decapitated or otherwise mutilated in some fashion, and have symbols carved into their skin. Uh, some of them are exsanguinated. Um, and about six years ago, this is how it all ties in, is that um, a group of hikers found uh, the body of Daniel Cristofari, a graduate student in mathematics, buried in a shallow grave in the forest preserves. His eyes and his hands were missing, and just like the animals before him, the symbols had been carved into the body. Can I find FBI, any... The FBI still has an open case on this. You got into the, you know, the criminology department research stuff, right? And, and weird mm -hmm. things like that, so... Can I find an example of what the symbols look like? Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, the research is... You know, it definitely triggers your occult sense there, so... Okay. You're not looking at natural religion, so... No, no, no. Hmm. Okay, well, I've written all this stuff down. Um, yeah. Said part of it doesn't seem connected, but it might be. I mean, the, the just, I guess my, my, I would think that it's so many unusual things have happened in relation to this area that, you know, maybe there is a chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to put that away for the time being. And you're going to give me a resolve plus composure roll with an additional one. I bet I know what you're going to try to get me to do. Uh, uh, resolve plus composure plus one. Oh, 
Oh, damn it. There we go. Wow. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> Holy crap, you're rolling dice. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of dice, man. Yeah. Get him, Ma. That's it. All right. And um, now when you get an exceptional success. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so this is what it says. Your character is action succeeds beyond expectations, achieving by five or more successes. You gain a beneficial condition. Um, usually inspired is the most appropriate, but you can give this condition to another character when it's appropriate in the story. Hmm. So, so the, uh, so you feel a very strong urge to, um, to call, um, To call Samantha Way, and hmm. um, yeah, so much so that that I'm going to say that you are inspired to connect with her. All right, let's take a look at this card. One second. One second. Let me just put. I got a lot of damn cards behind my character. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you're just hoarding them all for yourself. There you go. Hit Z on that, and you can see what happens there. All right. Inspired. Your character is deeply inspired. When your character takes an action pertaining to that inspiration, you may resolve this condition. Gain a willpower point and consider the role an exceptional success on three successes instead of five. Okay. So to resolve this condition, I think I would have to call Samantha. And you are, yeah, connect with her. Yeah. You are urged to do so. Um, which means if you, if you follow through with that urge, then uh, you get a beat. You will also resolve inspired, which gives you another beat. Well, I think I'm going to call her because I've actually got reason to. I'm inspired to call her because um, I would very much like to talk to her about uh, what I experienced and what I've, the research I found. And, you know, as a very good friend of mine, it only makes sense that I would contact her. Well played. All yes. right. Then you will uh, resolve inspired. And when you, any in, in a role related to this, will be considered exceptional on three successes instead of five. Not that you need to roll to call her, but... No, no. Okay. So, you give her a call. Ring, ring, ring. All right. And, uh, hello? Hey, Sam, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Grayson. How are you doing? I'm okay, Grayson. How are you? Um, I I, I think I'm okay. I've had I had a weird encounter to, uh, to earlier today. Um, first of all, before I get to that, have you heard anything more about Albert? No, no. His family is uh, is uh, starting to, you know, get back into the swing of life. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm just happy to not have to spend much more time with them. Um, I'd rather spend some time with you. Oh, well, maybe you can make that arrangement. Um, what are you doing right now? Just talking to you. Well, yeah, get that. But would you, uh, would you like to meet for drinks? Um, I can be at your place in a half an hour. Sounds good. Um, I'll tell you about the, the experience I had today. It's, it's kind of, uh, kind of wild. Mm. All right. Um, what should I bring? Uh, let's see. Yourself and high heels. <laughs> Done. And she hangs up. Cue the bass line. <laughs> That's right. And, um, yeah. So there you are. And, uh, I'm assuming you 
you spruce up a little bit. Oh, of course, yeah. I've even had, I'm going to have I'm going to shower. Oh, that never yeah. happens. Well, jeez. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm usually a, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, no more professorial shabby. No, exactly. No, no. We're getting out the the clippers and everything. Look at that. Oh yeah, I should clip my nails. <laughs> Just picture it like. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got time. He's gonna be a bit, it's gonna be about half an hour before she gets here. I got time. I got time. That's right. <laughs> Gosh, I'm picturing like what's his name there? The the recluse. Oh. Um, oh, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes just have these <laughs> <long> <laughs> nasty <laughs> I hear the toenails that are like just yeah. like claws. What are we gonna do with the what are we gonna do with the jars of the urine? Oh, we probably probably should save those. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So you uh, you gussy up, and uh, yeah, and in uh, and in uh, about a half hour, um, there's a knock at your door. I go to the door and let her in. All right, and um, yeah, how much are you are you resisting her not so subtle advances? Hard no, no resistance at all. <laughs> All right, and um, yeah, you feel some urges in the back of your mind, but you, you don't need those really. Um, right. And uh, you make a uh, a spirit of campus assault rather uh, rather happy to uh, to indulge um, as you yourself indulge, and as you guys lay there in bed afterward. Um, what do you talk about? Well. Not Albert. Um, oh, you remembered his name. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I bet you were thinking about him the whole time. <laughs> hell no, hell no, hell no. Um, I said, so, I said I was going to talk to you about a uh, weird ex uh, experience I had. Um, I mean, what we just did was far better than that, but I still need to get, uh, get off my chest. Do you mind? No, she says. Has she kind of... <laughs> flips over on the pillow and looks at you. So I was at the library and uh, I was looking for that book uh, that I, that that Albert was looking for, or Albert's father. I can't remember which one of which one was looking for it, Albert or Albert's father. I think Albert, wasn't he? Albert was looking for it. Albert's father came to you and asked you. That's right. That's right. As well. Yeah, that's right. Um, but it went missing. It's gone missing. And um, the librarian I was talking to, uh, he and I, you know, there's other things that happened in between. Um, but he figured that somebody took it through the vents. So we went, <laughs> we crawled through the vents. <laughs> what? Yeah, we crawled through the vents in the library. Uh, and like it was ridiculous. The, the air duct? Yeah, the air ducts. Yeah. What, he was but, a spy? Uh, no, but here's the creepiest thing. When we got to the, like, the duct where we thought that the person might have entered, we, 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 we poked ourselves out of it, and we were in Stag Field. And I don't mean, like, Stag Field where it is now. I mean, where Stag Field was then, like the old Stag Field. And she just she just starts laughing, right? She's like, yeah, right? She's like, Grayson, that's ridiculous. I, I, you're, 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 you're preaching to the choir, but I wasn't the only who experienced. Uh, Christopher, the the librarian, he also experienced it too, as well. Uh, to the point where we got out of it, we could actually feel the cold air, like it was, it was like winter there, and and there were there was a figure that started coming towards us. It was a a cheerleader dressed in like 1960s outfit. And then the cheerleader changed into a giant football player. Uh, I, and again, I know this sounds absolutely insane. Uh, I don't necessarily believe it happened. Uh, maybe it was like a, a mutual hallucination or something. Maybe there's like, I don't know, uh, some sort of carbon monoxide poisoning there. Who knows? But it seemed really real. And, I was doing a little bit of research before I called you. There's been a lot of strange things that happened in that area anyways. 
You mean on the campus? <laughs> well, the yeah, campus and that's is not like you know over a hundred years old. <laughs> so yeah, in a yeah. hundred years, a lot of strange things are going to happen. Grace and Bridger, she kind of pokes your chest. You are over worked and overstressed especially with richard quay showing up in your office and demanding you look into some book that he, that, that family wants to acquire well i can say he didn't... as much as i'm sad that that something happened to albert i'm glad that i don't have to marry into that family anymore fair point um to be fair he didn't demand that he do it. He did ask, um, but uh, oh, I'm sure I know he did, how he asked. Yeah, that's true. He didn't have to ask. I was I was very curious about it, anyways. I'm still very curious. I mean, th this thing's an enigma. <sighs> Sometimes we add to our enigmas to make them seem more fanciful than they actually are. You need to ground yourself out, Grayson. Listen. How I got together with Albert in the first place was an arrangement between his father and my father. It would be good for everybody, they said. Um, and, well, if you hadn't come along, I suppose I, it would be very good for everything. But here you are, and, well, we happened. So, um, and then something happened to him, and, well, anyway, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But my... My father worked with Albert at the Pui Talk Center. They have a kind of a, it's, it's kind of a self-help um, thing, but it, they, they do meditation. And you probably just need to kind of anchor yourself and, and, uh, and put, your, put your head on straight. <sighs> Crawling around in the ductwork of the Regenstein Library? Honestly, Grayson. Yeah, no, it seems crazy. With a, with I a li you and a librarian crawling, over, you know, it's what got to you. I just, I'm really, I guess, I'm just very curious about this book. I don't know. It's, it's gotten something inside of me. Look, Tuesday nights are their regular uh, sessions. It's open to the public. Head over there. Take one in. Yeah, sure. I could do that. Tell him that I sent you there. He'll treat you like gold. <laughs> well, I hope you, you treat me like gold. Well, he won't treat you like I treat you. Uh, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> that said, there's a lot of, a lot of women there in their yoga pants, so... <laughs> well, I've only got eyes for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so we will jump over to Dark Templar and Vahilo. Sure. All right. So you guys are in in uh, Vinny's, we, Vinny's vehicle. Yeah, see, we left off. Uh, I was asking where where you lived, because I was going to take you home. Uh, I name off like where we're, where we're heading. We were heading towards where I was originally from uh i uh to be i'm gonna be up front with you because you helped us out but um i pretty much live on the streets here myself and uh, my friend here we don't really have a home i had a home at one time but... man it's it's been cold these last few days like you've been on the streets these last few days yeah man it's been freezing i'm telling you it's been really rough. cold she says So we, we really appreciate you helping us out. I, like we're I, like, don't worry, we're not troublemakers. I want to be absolutely clear. Just, I, these people are weird. Just weird people coming after us, and I don't know what's going on. And it's, yeah, it's been a pretty crazy couple of days. Let me tell you. But I, I guarantee you, we're not trouble. So I, I'm I'm sorry if it, if it seems that way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hem and haw for a second. Um, listen, like you, you look like you're pretty well to do and I, I don't want to ask for, you know, too much. And I, and I really appreciate what you've done so far. And I don't want to ask for like a handout, but like, I'm looking for work, man. 
and I don't want to live this life anymore. And obviously, living on the streets and being chased by people isn't the safest thing that for things to happen. Like, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm grasping at straws. You get what I'm saying? Who Who was that person that was chasing you there? And I turned over. Like I'm like Karen. Is some guy that wants to bring me back to a bad situation. Well, he's too, I would think, too old to be a boyfriend. Is he yeah. your dad? No. No. No, but he's, he's going to make a bad situation worse. I just need well, to I can, uh, I can maybe offer you a spot to stay for, for a night. Maybe two if you don't ruin it. Dude, and, uh, anything, anything, man. Like, right now, it's not even safe for us to go back to the shelter. So I'm, I'm going to turn off the, uh, the route that I was taking to get to wherever Elliot wanted, like, was kind of telling me to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to okay. drive up to where I have my, uh, my shop. Okay. Okay. That is in Bridgeport as well. It's not necessarily in your backyard, but it's in the same same area. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in and basically use my like my little garage door opener that I have in my car to open the open the chain link fence of my the yard, and I'm gonna go right into the right into the warehouse yep. where I have you know some trucks parked and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Cool. Uh, what what is this place? Well, this is this is my place. This is my uh, my shop. <clears throat> All right. I, uh, I I I do garbage collection. Oh. Okay. So. Cool. It's 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 warm. No one's gonna no one's gonna find you in here. The floor may not be comfortable. It might be a little bit smelly, but. Hey. I I can I'm offer not, you a spot. I, I, can offer, I can offer you a spot here tonight if you, you know, don't worry about uh, about how we met, and uh, maybe tomorrow we can talk about some work. All right, that sounds great. Um, Karen, do you do you feel safe here? Like that's the most important part. She looks at the big fence that got opened up and stuff like that. I'm sure it's got like the three rows of barbed wire across the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh yeah. She's like, this is probably the safest place we've been in weeks. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. I am. Oh, I am so in your debt. I'm gonna stick out my hand for a handshake. I'll, I'll slowly reach out and shake his hand. Okay. I'll be, I'll be a, for myself, it'd be like a firm like handshake. I mean, I'm like so grateful. Like I'm just like. Yeah, nah, I'm not going to be totally into it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, whatever. It's up to you, man. Like, <laughs> you I just picture a picture of Elliot with the two hands, the pumping it up and down, like just. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm Elliot, by the way. This is Karen. Hi. She says, "You, you, you can call me Mr. Rossi." All right, Mr. Rossi. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, you you get some sleep. Right. Know that I and I'm going to point up to a couple of corners in the shop and just say, "Know that I have uh, have some cameras in here." Yeah. So. If I'll you're if you're gonna try and cheat me out of anything, I'm no, gonna know about my, it. I'll hold my hands up and like you know like kind of like trying to gun at me like no no, this is this is like amazing. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm and, uh, that. I'm not gonna fuck something up like this. I'll I'll try and be here first thing in the morning, before any of the other guys get in to uh, to talk about maybe some work. Thanks. Uh, what time is it right now? I don't know. It's probably. About six thirty or seven o'clock. Okay, I'm well, gonna actually, ask. Be later you. than that, right? Because seven o'clock was when 
then he was supposed to go to the yeah, dark a, thing. So it's got to be like around eight. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna ask him, like, hey, listen, we've been like on the run. Do you have anything to eat? I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna walk. I want to walk over to the staff room and see if anybody maybe left their lunches behind or anything like that. Oh yeah, there's like donuts left over from the morning or something like that. Yeah, so I'll just say, well, you know, if there's anything in the uh, in the fridge there, all right, go for it. Yeah, I, I, tell these, I tell these shitheads that work for me not to leave anything overnight in the fridge, but you know, alas, it happens. Okay, thanks, man. I I can't thank you enough. This has been a great. This has been the best part of my day. I think that says a lot more about your day than it says about my shop. I mean, we have a little small chuckle. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to head home, try to get some rest. If you end up working for me, you're going to, you're going to need your rest. All right. Thanks. Mr. Rossi. All right, and I'm going to get back into my car. All right. Cool. And you head home? Yeah. All right. DT, anything you want to talk to Karen about? or I'm going to talk about her, her, her foot there, her bite. Yeah. And uh, I kind of want to make a social role to, like, try to, I guess, go to look at it kind of thing. Like, yeah, it's you can, yeah. like and, a manipulation plus persuasion to get her to show you. Right, but I want to fail it. Okay, because you you don't. I'm shaken see it. by it. Okay. No, because I'm shaken by it, so I want to like fail this role on purpose. Okay. I'm curious about it. I want to know more about it, but like I'm gonna fail this social role, like getting to look at it. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So, uh, I'm just trying to see what we got here. Hold on. Because I'm scared for it, right? Like, I, I, it shocked me and, like, shook me. Yeah. So that you're... And obviously, I'm going to Yeah. So I'm going to... Yeah. So I'm going to say... I'm just trying to make a... See a way that you initiating something like this and then it failing... Yeah, I'm gonna say that uh, that it's easy to convince her, but when when she goes to sh to show it, you, you do catch a glimpse and you utterly recoil and you like you won't even stay near her the rest of that night. Yeah, sounds good. So, you know, she feels just you know like kind of kind of betrayed, but not to the point where it's going to um, sever the relationship, but it'll flavor yeah. the RP. So yeah, you can yeah, resolve your shake in that way. Thank you. <laughs> Beat me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And, uh, yeah, cool. All right. Well, that will wrap up this evening. We'll catch up with Teku next time. Uh, for those of yep. you that tuned in, we thank you very much. Um, if you, again, if you like what you, what you saw, hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more and know when it's going to happen, hit subscribe. Uh, put your comments down below. And, uh, yeah, you can follow us on social media, uh, Twitter, our Discord. Uh, all the links are below. Um, yeah, thanks for, for tuning in. And remember, if you can't roll high, you can always hang with us at Initiative Zero.